And so the, the bow weevil that, that um, ended up hurting the cotton in mm -hmm. the South, mm -hmm. and so people of African descent started to migrate for better lives, better mm -hmm. conditions to, move, to migrate to the North. Mm -hmm. And so you found that places like Cleveland, and, and surprisingly Boston, mm -hmm. New York, Philadelphia, um, Washington, D.C., that is endearingly called Chocolate City, mm -hmm. um, all these other urban areas, or in New York and Harlem, mm -hmm. all of these urban areas people moved to to try to have better jobs in industrialized mm -hmm. type of a country at this mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And um, as they moved there, they were hoping for a better life. Mm -hmm. And um, this is one of the primary reasons for moving from the South mm -hmm. to the North. Mm -hmm. And when they went, they went into these particular areas mm -hmm. that became, as time went on, a very much a part of urban problems. Mm -hmm. Economics became disastrous. Mm -hmm. This groups of people that migrated there came there with high hopes and in many instances prospered and did a lot better, but they had low skilled types of jobs that they could finish a job and then go right out of that job and, and, and take on another one. Mm -hmm. So things were better. And I would also like to say during this time period of 1916 to say that first migration period to 1930, mm -hmm. if we think about World War I and World War II, yes. why there was a need there for people to build railroads because of the war, to build um, military equipment. Mm -hmm. So therefore, industries evolved. And there was a, a need for large numbers of people to work in those industries. Mm -hmm. So this workforce that moved there came there for those types of reasons. Mm -hmm. But on a more intellectual level, it is very interesting to understand because of that great migration, something by the name of the Harlem Renaissance Good. emerged. Mm -hmm. And during this time period, you had people like Zora Neale Hurston, the great Duke Ellington, mm -hmm. um, Count mm -hmm. Basie, um, just many other literary scholars at that time, mm -hmm. the great W.B. Du Bois all, and Marcus Garvey, okay. all of those people in this central area from that great migration emerged that really contributed to the American culture mm -hmm. as well as the world culture. Mm -hmm. But now, given that, you had World War I, World War II, large concentrations of people moving from the south to the north. Um, with an increase in the millions by this time that had moved into urban areas. And after they got there and worked and worked very hard, you would find that discrimination was even there in the Good. north okay. as they very mm -hmm. much experienced sometimes in the south. Mm -hmm. People were disrespecting. Um, weren't used to that group of people moving in, mm -hmm. that group of people taking jobs that others felt that they should have. And when you think about today's political climate, right. mm -hmm. some of the same issues are very much present with immigration of other people mm -hmm. coming in, in, into the country or with groups of people still um, competing for jobs and within the workforce. Mm -hmm. But this was a, a great migration that took place in that particular time period from 1916, say, to 1930 with large concentrations of African Americans moving. Mm -hmm. And then we can look at what we might refer to as a second wave of that All same right. migration mm -hmm. that that really that went on from up until the 1960s through the 1970s, mm -hmm. again with people moving from the south to the north in, in, in large population numbers. Mm -hmm. And that statistics just increased and people were moving for a better way of life and to also to prosper and to move away from a very depressed, offensive, racist society. And the violent side, a very, and very the violent, violent side, side at yes. the time. Mm -hmm. well, yes. Well, since we're in, into a, a, a voting season now, yes. how did African Americans participate in the politics yes. uh, once they got out of the South? Yeah, make yeah, make yeah. some statements. Well, about that's that. a very interesting concept because historically, um, Africans who had an opportunity to vote would have probably voted in the Republican Party mm -hmm. at that particular time. Mm -hmm. But then there was a transition that took place, you know, after World War I, World War II, and things started to change, that people started to move toward a more democratic type of voting. And those types of possibilities as they move to the north um, lean in, in that direction. And I think that's why today you will find large numbers of people who are concentrated in urban areas will vote on a democratic ticket um, because they feel that they are 
their policies were geared toward them more so than what a more mm -hmm. conservative uh, Republican Party would. So they actually were indeed um, um, the Democratic Party. But they were forced to be reckoned with and people had to go in and, and many people started to merge into education, become Congress people out mm -hmm. of those urban areas and very politically motivated mm -hmm. um, within in that urban setting. Mm -hmm. But um, <coughs> going back to that whole notion of them moving there, we would like to try to say that when we look at the culture of those concentrated urban areas, mm -hmm. a lot of deviance started to emerge. Why? Because the economics within those particular cities did not allow people to continue as we moved into a technological age mm -hmm. to have the same jobs that they had when they went there in an earlier time period of 1916 to mm -hmm. the 1930s, or why they went there in the, in the 50s and 60s in, a, in large proportions. So now we see pockets of cultural poverty within those same urban settings mm -hmm. that would be disproportionate of African Americans in that area. So education, economics, um, school systems, family breakup, all of those characteristics that would lead toward high crime rates are certainly characteristics mm -hmm. of a large number of the urban areas. Mm -hmm. And then this become a, a very huge problem mm -hmm. within the United States. So when we look at Chicago mm -hmm. and look at other urban areas, we see homicide rates are so high. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's the people, but it's the social environment of living in the culture mm -hmm. of poverty and those characteristics that it has manifested that will cause that to happen. Okay, and we're gonna take a short commercial break and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. <laughs> They've been in the South mm. because of the early migrants are now moving back to the okay. South. <clears throat> and, 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 okay. and, and in the meanwhile, okay. say something about uh, the system of separation and segregation. Oh, yes, I mean, yes. In, in, in the South, it was yes. clear. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, here's the law, he yeah, said, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ferguson. Yeah. Yes, right. But in the North, it was not always that yes. that way and how that might have contributed. You okay, know, yes. The separation absolutely. of, you know, only black folks yeah. here. And the, yeah, okay. yeah do, do something right, like that. All right, I hit that, that too. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think that that was sort of round out. That's right. This it excellent would. information. Okay. You've got them there. That's right. And they're working and they're going to war and everything else and et cetera. But while they're there, Everything is not equal in That's a real right. sense. And this is where the suffrage plays a, a, a very, very important part. And some of the things that we ought to be doing, thinking about today. That's right. In terms of trying to deal with this uh, politic. Mm -hmm. so, Okay. But that's that's essentially yeah. yeah, so yeah we'll yeah. have ten minutes. Okay, so yes, anything that's that you fine. want to throw within okay. the framework of un making people understand the violence, brutality, okay. et cetera, in the northern parts of it sociologically. Okay. Yeah, Absolutely. just throw it at us. You see. Okay. I'm trying to know that lady's name is yeah, it starts with an N. Uh, she she did this this tremendous study on uh, Africans, the, mi the migra migration, migration of black folks to the northern parts okay. of the United States South was on yeah. all of the. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. E. Kelly Sanford from uh, Tennessee State University, and he's given us some information in reference to Africans in uh, the cities. And uh, let's pick up where we left off, uh, Dr. Sanford, and have you to uh, talk about uh, some aspects of separation and segregation and yes. some of the other things that you like to uh, deal with during this last 